It's Map Designer here, and in this video I want to talk about sectionals. Yes, good old sectionals. They're getting more and more in the news at the moment, um, sometimes being represented accurately, sometimes not so much. There are a lot of people learning about it at the moment, including me, um, and including, it seems, quite a few of the guys on Racing TV. Um, I'm sure they'll get their head around it, and um, hopefully they will provide uh, data for their tracks um, before too long because at the moment we're a little bit hamstrung in that we only have this information for the um, uh, most of the uh, tracks covered on Sky Sports Racing. Uh, they're provided by a, um, a, a company called Total Performance Data and we license the data from them. It looks a bit like this. I'll explain more about that, much more about that in a minute, but first things first. Um, there is a lot more information in the user guide from page 64 onwards and you can download the user guide from your um, from your my GG's page here it is right here latest update was a couple of weeks ago um, the, uh, the other thing to note if you want to use sectional data if you want to look at it in um, in the GG's race cards Firstly, you need to be a gold subscriber. Secondly, you need to switch it on. Um, so again, in the My GGs over on the right hand side, you've got this race card options section. And if you scroll down to the bottom there, uh, you will see this sectional section. Now the default is none because if you're not interested in this stuff, you don't need all these boxes cluttering up your view of the world. So, um, by default it's switched off. If you can't see it, it's either switched off or you're looking at a race for which we don't have data. And if you're looking at a race for which we don't have data, it's either a race that's not on Sky Sports Racing or um, <clears throat> the data hasn't come in yet. And we normally update this overnight, so yesterday's results would be available today, for, ex for example. Um, there are a few exceptions to that. Uh, but generally speaking that's a good rule of thumb so that's that that's where you can find it and as I say there is loads more information on um, in the user guide and and really it's well well worth a look for those who want more information um, this document written by uh, Simon Rowlands who is uh, widely acknowledged in this country at least as one of the foremost um, <clears throat> experts on sectional timing uh, is an absolute must read now it's it's a little bit necessarily a little bit dry in places but um, it's broken down very uh, well into really logical chunks and you can get a, a heck of a lot of um, insight into sectional timing from looking at this I'll post a link to it underneath the video um, so what are sectional times and why do we use them well in in their most basic form sectional times break a race down into chunks so if you think of uh, a 3000 meter race on the track in track and field they obviously go round and round and round the same lap uh, 12 and a half times I think it is and is that right yeah four no, 5,000 meter race would be 12 and a half times, seven and a half in a 3,000, doesn't really matter. Anyway, they go around the same loop multiple times and at each point when they pass the finishing line, the clock stops and we're shown a time for the last lap, the last lap time. Now those lap times give a, an indication of how <coughs> the race has been run and often they'll show what world record pace is and things like that. So you can, you can gauge the... Um, the tempo of the race at each lap time by each lap time now of course horse races uh, are not run in that way they're run on um, a variety of topologies uh, we've got flat tracks we've got turning tracks we've got straight tracks we've got undulating tracks we've got all sorts of ups and downs and lefts and rights um, so the lap time analogy doesn't really work very well. What we do in horse racing is we have furlong times and um, in order to avoid there being too many of them, uh, some 
manufacturers, some producers of this data, publishers is the word I'm after, some publishers uh, break it down into more manageable chunks. So um, on Gigi's we've got, we've actually got three options, but two on the main screen. Call points, as we call them, is essentially that's five chunks. So this is a mile, a mile and a half race as near as damn it, and we break it into the start to nine furlongs from home, nine furlongs to six furlongs, six furlongs to three furlongs, and then three to two and two to zero, which is the finish line. Um, so it's five chunks. Or we also have OMC, which stands for opening, middle and closing, and that's just three. Start to nine, nine to three, and three to zero. Um, so you can see in this race, for instance, um, based on these chunks, they went fast early and even in the middle and even to fast towards the end. Um, if we do it on the call points, it breaks it down a little bit more and you can see that they went fast early, even, even, even to slow and even to fast. This is color coding. Now I'll come into that in a bit more detail in a minute um, because another thing that's happened in the last week or so is there's been a lot of chat about um, a 12 second furlong, an 11 and a half second furlong at this time um, the absolute times and th th there are real dangers with absolute times because um, for example this is the Derby trial result from uh, last week uh, English King was an impressive winner and um, uh, advertised his Derby credentials um, and we talk about that in a little more detail in a minute but if we compare this with um, Anthony Van Dyke who was uh, last year's winner um, and obviously advertised his credentials because he went on to win the derby. His winning time of 231.27 compares with 224.36 for English King. Um, so it was seven seconds slower. Uh, English King ran on good to firm. Anthony Van Dyke ran on soft. So then they're, they're clearly not immediately um, comparable. We have to make an allowance for the going. And the way we do that is we, well, a bunch of ways, but in this particular case, we do it by looking at something called par. Now, par is, um, if I just take Anthony Van Dyke off here, par is a, a line which... Um, expresses the the energy expenditure by furlong in this case it could be by call points or by OMC but in this case we'll go with by furlong it expresses the energy expenditure as as a percentage of the total en energy expenditure so for instance if the horse ran every furlong in the same time it would be a hundred percent straight across the line um, and above or below 100% doesn't necessarily mean it went harder because it depends on the topology of the track. You go faster on a downhill straight bit than you will on an uphill turning bit, as an example, as an exaggerated example. And so this line here that looks a bit like a roller coaster um, kind of a accounts for those the variance in the race course topology. It, it essentially, this is the line um, the optimal line to run a race. Now, you can see at the top here we've got this, um, there are 65 races in this mile and a half Lingfield turf sample. Um, and that gives us a par confidence of low to medium. So um, when we've got 165 races in the sample, this par line might look slightly different. I wouldn't expect it to look significantly different, but it might look slightly different. Um, but you can take it as read that this is this is how to run optimally in a um, in a mile and a half race on the turf at Lingfield. Now, if we compare that with, uh, let's see if we can get a good comparator. Um, I'm not going to get it there, but I'm going to get it here. Um, if we just look at this race here, you can see that um, there in this six furlong uh, all weather race, we've got 282. Uh, races in the sample and the par confidence is therefore high and if you can you see this is a this is a dark this is a black line basically a very dark gray line whereas here um, for Anthony Van Dyke's 65 race sample it's a kind of a middling gray line so the the darker 
this par line, the more the confidence level in the par data. Um, okay, now one thing that's really important to say about par is that par is not an average. It's not the average of, um, we don't take the 65 races um, and work out what, what all of the leader's energy expenditure was after a furlong and take the middle one and put it in there. That's not how that works. And the reason we don't do that is because um, we're trying to assess what is a truly run race. And most races at a mile and a half on the turf are to a lesser or greater degree not truly run. Whereas most races over five or six furlongs probably are. So, um, so what we do is we use an nth percentile. That basically means that, and there is an algorithm for this that I won't, I won't bore you with now, but essentially, um, we look at, we look at in, in a race like a mile and a half, we might look at, for instance, and I don't know what the number is off the top of my head, but it might be the, the, uh, 12th percentile. We, it would be much higher than halfway that was the percentile, whereas in a five furlong sprint, it would be, it would be much a much bigger percentile. Um, so, if you want to know more about the mechanics, again, it's in uh, I think it's in Simon's document somewhere on on how to do that. Um, we have crunched the numbers, and I've forgotten how we did it, but I've I've got that documented somewhere. Just take it take our word for it that this par line is an accurate reflection of um, how to run a race optimally. And people talk about efficiency, and that's, you know, again, that's another word for optimal. Basically, using a horse's energy in the best way to get him to run his best race. So, again, going back to track and field, um, world records are set generally when there are pacemakers in the race, and the guy who's trying to achieve the world record is paced at even laps throughout. So, he might be you know, it might be paced at, I don't know, um, 62 second laps, whatever it is, to get to the world record. And they know that if the guy can, if if the hired hairs, if the pacemakers can keep the world record aspirant um, up to his work at the right level, that he will use his energy sufficiently optimally to potentially break the world record. Um, compare that with a championship race where... Be, it might be much more tactical and much less fast as a result. And they might crawl around for the first uh, six laps in 3000 of a seven and a half lap race. And then somebody sprints with a lap to go. And then with 300 or 200 to go, um, the guys with the best kick have the best chance to win the race. And that might not necessarily be the fastest man in the race. And so it happens in horse racing as well, that the, the fastest horse can often be compromised by the run of the race and if we know which horses um, perform best in truly run races and if we know which horses finish best in steady steadily run early races then we've got some information that a lot of people um, haven't got and this is this for me is one of the things that um that sectional data is really useful for. Um, it tells us how a, how a race was run. It breaks it down into chunks and says we can see immediately. Now, what we can't see actually in this with these five chunks. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, I'm going to put the uh, I'm on the wrong chart here. I'll put this one on a second um, and go back to English Kings race. Now, what we can see when we have um, just get this in the window properly right so the red line is English King and the dark gray line is the par line now we can see that um, first of all it's important also to say that this is a listed race you know this is a race for horses who believe they have gen genuine credentials to win the derby the the blue ribboned group one at Epsom um, and if that's the case, then these are going to be the best races that are run over this course and distance at Lingfield over a mile and a half. So we would expect the winners to perform above par because they are better horses than most of the horses running over this course and distance. So that stands to reason. Um, 
Nevertheless, if we use a comparison between English King's performance and the par line, we can see what he did and where he did it. And essentially, um, he was, uh, in actual fact, the whole field was, as you can see from this orange block for the race leader uh, at the top here, um, the whole field was well above par in the early section. So that's the start to the nine furlong. So that's to here. Um, this chunk here, and I can replicate that on here actually if I do that. So we can see that the start to nine furlongs, the sectional, the par sectional percentage is 92.2, um, and the, Lee, the the English King in this case did 96.3 for the sectional percentage. Um, the leader actually did 98%, as you can see up here. Um, and then they got closer to par. They actually steadied it up a bit in the middle part of the race. And then they quickened it up again. And, and you can see much better um, from the furlong by furlong where they quickened it up. And it was specifically um, kind of the four, between the, the five and the three, if you like, but mostly between the four and the three. It was a, <clears throat> a big spurt. So um, the par expectation for that section, that furlong, uh, is 101.7, so just above 100%. This lad ran it in 107.8, so much faster. And not only was he able to, uh, to, to kind of, uh, input this acceleration into his race, but he was able to sustain that performance above par to the finishing line. Now that was to some degree by the, um, uh, uh, assisted by the fact that the middle part of the race was actually quite steady, not slow, but steady. Again, keep in mind that these these are Derby aspirants, so we would expect the we would expect them to be running um, above par. We would expect them to be able to um, to perform better than your average runners. Um, nevertheless, this was a very solid performance. Um, so that's one of the things that we can use sectional information to tell us. Um, it can also tell us, um, certainly on Gigi's, we have something that um, I borrowed from America. So if I just go to this window here, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. Um, this is a this is a form guide. This is basically the daily racing form in America, uh, which is their um, their racing post equivalent. It's the it's the number one. Uh, racing publication in the States and this is how they lay out the form for a race. Now you can't see on the left hand side there's the date and the, and the distance and a few other bits and pieces. Um, let me just um, see if I can move this across a little bit somehow because there is some stuff in here that I'd like to show you. Okay I think we can we can probably get it from there. Right let's try that. Okay so this is Bellafina. Um, and we can see here that um, it's a mile, a mile and a sixteenth, so a mile and half a furlong race. Um, they tell us the quarter mile splits here. So what they do is they, whereas in Britain we start, um, the clock starts from the time they leave the gate. So what we tend to see is we see this, this first fraction is very, very slow. You know, very, it's always down here, regardless of the course and the distance. And then they get up to racing speed. And what tends to happen is because they're accelerating, they over accelerate. So they go from, um, being quite slow at the beginning. And then the second and third, certainly the second furlong, often the third furlong can be, uh, faster than optional. And then they settle into a rhythm, which is more akin to where they ought to be. Um, in the US, their timing, they get around this, they have what they call a run up. And that is basic, that basically means that, um, that the first part of the race, um, is not timed. So the clock doesn't start from a standing start. It starts from when they hit a beam, maybe 40 yards in or whatever. Um, and they track it from there. Anyway, so this 22 and three, this is 22 and three fifths of a second for the first uh, quarter, then 46 and one fifth for the, um, through half a mile, and then one minute 11 through six furlongs, and 144 and a fifth at the finish, so eight, eight and a half furlongs. So that's that, they have these, these are the equivalent of our sectional times. 
They also have, and this is the main body of the form here, is this part that I've highlighted. Oops, not <laughs> this part that I've highlighted, if I can do this right. And this is what's called a running line. And it tells us, one, two, three, four, five, it tells us for each of these, um, for, for each call point in the race, uh, what position the horse held, third, second, first, fourth, fourth, and how far behind the leader it was, or in front if it was the leader. So um, it was third and one and a half behind, one and a half lengths behind the leader at the first call point. By the third call point, which is, um, I think it's about the, the turn in, the two furlong pole, um, it was in the lead by half a length and it's flattened out. She's flattened out here. Um, so that's that. Now, you can't get this in Britain, but I think it's really useful information. And the data that we have here, let me just uh, put this back as it was. The data that we have enables us to produce these, what are called running lines, and they hide behind this button here. So if I, let's close the chart up for a second and click, press the running lines button. Um, and the running lines are over here on the left hand side. And you can see, for example, um, in actual fact, just to make it easier, I'm just gonna open that one up. Um, and you can see, for example, um, what I did there, by the way, is I clicked on the horse's finishing position. So if I click on that one, you can see that, and then I click it again and it closes. Now what I've, I've got, but I've basically got all the data here. So I've got the, um, the in running comment, I've got the running lines, I've got the sectional times, um, and I've got the uh, sectional blocks. And what we can do is we can compare these sectional blocks, which are English kings, against the race leader at each point. Um, and see how they compare. So that's interesting. But what I really want to show you is these running lines. And we can see that in the case of English King, he was, this is an eight runner race, he was sixth, three and a half behind the leader at the nine furlong from home point, S to nine. That's this one. And then uh, six furlongs from home, so essentially halfway through this mile and a half race, this 12 furlong race, uh, he was fifth three lengths behind the leader so basically the same place um, at the three furlong pole he was still fifth uh, three and three quarter lengths behind the leader and then he kind of cruised into it so at the two furlong pole he was second three quarters of a length behind Barcia Rocco and then by the finish he'd cleared away and he won by two and three quarter lengths um, so that's very helpful to understand how a horse has uh, come through the field, how far back it was, how much of um, how much a jockey perhaps gave his or her mount to do. Um, and in this case, you can see that the uh, jockey was Tom Marquand. He's timed it very well, and he's gone away and won nicely on a very good horse. Um, but you can also see that he gets an upgrade of zero. This UP column is upgrade. He gets a zero upgrade because he, he rode an optimal, he rode an efficient race. He rode a good race to um, give English King his best chance in the circumstances. Um, so he gets a zero upgrade. When horses are, are, when horses are raced sub-optimally, uh, particularly when they finish kind of second, third or fourth running on with more to give, very frustrating for punters, they get an upgrade because they probably, if they'd been asked for more effort earlier, they probably could have got closer. Um, and that's what these upgrade figures try to do. With, um, with the upgrade figures for those horses towards the back, that's often because they've gone hard early and faded late. So if we look at the chart for King Carney, uh, which is here, I'll just take English King off, you can see that um, comparing with the leader, he's gone much, he's gone harder through, well basically until three furlongs from home, his, his line is above the winner's line all the way, and then he's paid for those excessive exertions and he's faded away, but probably not tamely in fairness, because he's done, he's done much too much for nine furlongs. Um, and he's just not had much to give in in the in the latter part of the race. Um, that might be because he needs to be on the front or whatever. For whatever reason, um, he, he he wasn't 
he 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 didn't have his best chance. He didn't get the chance to show his best in this race. And you can see again, this is this is King Carney's um, color blocks compared with the race lead the the race leader. Um, he was the race leader. So these times 3305, 3305, 11130, 11, and so on. Um, they are the same in the early part of the race, but then he concedes the lead um, and this is the race leader so they change here <clears throat> and these percentages are a percentage of the the race leaders the, the race leader at the finish i.e the winner's time um, rather than King Carney's which is 227.59 it's three three and a bit seconds slower um, and you can see that his race was um, he was he was extremely in the red zone early and as a consequence of that he went he went red even even to slow slow very slow <laughs> um so that that kind of tells you uh, that's a color representation of what it says in the running lines here so he led by a length and a quarter at the nine furlong from home he led by a length and a quarter at the six from home he led by a length and three quarters at three from home and then he was hanging in there as best he could at the two furlong pole and dropped back to a length third um but then he faded away 20 length seventh by the finish so that's that's that information um and again you know it's kind of it's it's interesting information and there is one horse in here that i really want to um um you know everybody's talked about english king and of course he is uh you know he, he's run very well here i i i, I mean I think because he because he travelled so well and all the rest of it, you know, he probably although you couldn't mark him up on a time basis, um, he he looked he was visually very impressive, um, and you you couldn't help but you know like what you saw, and the data the the kind of sectional data backs it up to some degree. Although as I say, he was given a very good ride, um, a horse that might be of interest and might end up being quite a big price next time is sound of cannons now he came into this race with the second highest um official rating of 103 um, and he had some you know reasonable form last year running a, a group one in um uh italy sorry in france um at the back end last year and wasn't disgraced he ran in good company ran in a group two at Newmarket as well um, Brian Meehan has started the season slowly and, and and this horse I think his his data is interesting so um, I'm just going to put it on the chart actually so if we just find sound of cannon I'm going to take English King off a second and you can see that again you know he's done this um, he's he's over raced early basically um, <clears throat> raced very close to par through the middle and then he's got keen again um he, he's kind of he's kind of kicked a bit early here and he's got to the two pole and he's knackered um and faded away now that could mean one of three things it could mean that um he didn't stay uh and that's perfectly credible over this mile and a half trip he'd previously been running over um uh up to a mile and a quarter and it might have been that he flattened out in that mile and a quarter race as well so um although he's a year older now he might <clears throat> a mile and a half may have stretched his stamina so he, it, it's perfectly plausible that he didn't stay um not sure what's happened there let's just refresh that a second um a second credible explanation is that uh a lack of fitness told and that um he ran out of puff um and again you know that's given that the mean horses have appeared to be needing their first run that's certainly plausible as well and of course the third uh credible explanation is he wasn't good enough um and time will tell on that one um but this is the sort of thing that interests me you know it's like everybody can pick out the winner um, as a potential derby horse and he's second favorite for the derby great okay well thank you um that, <laughs> that's not it's not really helping me to be honest i think uh, you know he he has he obviously is credible but um uh he's a 
he's not a good price. I, in fact, I think he's the wrong price now uh, in the wrong way, as it were. I think he should be a bigger price than he is. If you've got him at 20 to 1 or whatever, then happy days. But if you're looking to back him at fives, um, I'm not. Um, I'm not looking to back Sound of Cannons to win a derby. But I do think that potentially over 10 furlongs with a run under his belt, I think he might be interesting next time. And he's going to be a price. So that's one of the things that I'm looking for. Um, now, before I close, I want to show you a few other things uh, within the chart because it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of easy to get hung up on the the default data if you like but there's a, a whole bunch of stuff you can do the first thing you can do is you can compare uh, for instance you can compare um, Anthony Van Dyke last year and you can see how he ran his race um, really efficiently actually you know just a, a little above par pretty much all the way through compared with the English King who was um, much closer to par in the middle but either side of that um, he ran faster early and faster late so you can do that um, but what you can also do is you can compare all the horses in the race. Now that's obviously a bit, um, it's a, it's a bit like a London underground map. It's, it, you, there's too much going on there. So you need to, you need to take stuff off it and kind of reassemble it. And you can do that by using this toggle on off button and then add in what you like. So you might want to compare the winner with sound of cannons, for instance. You can see they ran, um, largely comparable races until this final quarter mile um, so that's to me that's quite interesting um, what you can also do is we've got drop downs here so I showed you the you can look at if these are too many data points for you you can simplify things um, with the uh, the five call cool points <coughs> as I call them which are uh, the starts to the nine furlongs from home nine furlongs to six six to three and these will change depending on the race distance this is a mile and a half race um, so you can do that or you can look at OMC which is opening middle and close um, I, to be honest I, I don't think there's enough information in that for the uh, it's good for the um, it's good for the blocks at the top but it's not so good for the charting in my opinion uh, but you can do that so let's put that back on by furlong um, as well as sectional percentage which which tells you um, as the name suggests the percentage of time that the um, expressed as a percentage that the horse spent in each furlong each section um, and if it's call points then the sections are not furlongs they're whatever these blocks are at the bottom so that's sectional percentage there is also finishing speed percentage now graphing this is kind of misleading if you put them all on it's we call it the squid um, as you can see why um, but what you can do is you you kind of you can choose the point all of these numbers are from a point in the race to the finish because it's finishing speed percentage um, and in mile and a half races uh, some people still like to look at the quarter mile to the finish which would be this point here and you can see actually you can't see because it's off the screen that's helpful um, you'll have to take my word for it on this case his finishing speed percentage from the two to the finish was 107 percent and we can compare that with par uh he says there we go and you can see um you know par is down here um with 104.8 and he was sorry his, his yeah his finishing speed was 107.1 so uh, much higher um I like to use three or four from home for this sort of distance. Three, three from home, um, they're closer. And again, I mean, whichever whichever one you use, you can see that is, you know, he, f he finished the race very well. Um, so that's finishing speed percentage. We do have that um, within the um, within here as well. Um, I'll come on to that later on in a subsequent video. What we've also got is you can look at the time. Now, again, you know, the, it bears repeating that um, <clears throat> this is a listed race and therefore we expect the times to be quicker and therefore under the par line. So we were over par in percentage terms, but now we're under par in pure time terms. Um, so this is the par line for mile and a half races in time terms. And this is the actual race time, the English King 
recorded. And again, we can put Sound of Cannons on there as well. And you can see that he was um, competitive, quicker here, uh, but then flattened out. Sorry, I beg your pardon, he was competitive, um, slightly slower there, uh, and then quicker here, and then flattened out a lot slower um, in the last part of the race. So uh, I don't use this very often myself, but I think it's kind of, it's quite, it's quite instructive to compare raw times between horses. We've also got the race position of a horse. Um, so this is the leader, his race position in the race. This was an eight runner race and you can see that he was last early um, and was still fifth at the three furlong pole and then made a big move um, to be first by the furlong pole. So that's that. And the distance behind the leader is also interesting as well. Um, and if you are the leader, if we put King Carney on here as well, you can see kind of how it works. You can see that um, <clears throat> King Carney was leading and therefore he's zero lengths behind the leader. Um, English King was out back and was sort of three, four lengths behind the leader and then made this big move at, at roughly the same time that King Carney flattened right out. So that's kind of interesting um, for some people as well. And, it, you know, it, it's... You use what you use. You don't need to use anything in the chart if you don't want to. You don't need to worry about the numbers in the sectional boxes. Um, if you'd rather just have an indication uh, on your My Gigi's page, you can use the select visual like that, update it, of course. And then if we update this chart, you will, rather than seeing these the numbers, which might be too much information for you, you could just have... Um, uh, it would tell you that it's fast, even, even, quite slow and even. And it tells you the um, the sectional percentage for each section and how much more or less than par it was. So this race was fast 6% above par in the first section, um, even uh, like 0.1%. This is the race leader, 0.1% above par in the second section and so on. So that might be more... Um, consumable if you're new to this um, it's, uh, different people will use it in different ways um, how do you use this information well you're looking to understand the value of a horse in or of itself in the way that I showed you here you might also be looking for horses that have demonstrated that they can quicken off a slow pace and then we would see kind of <clears throat> rather than seeing fast here we'd see even 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 uh, fast fast and I'll, I'm sure I'll dig one of those out in a in the subsequent video. Um, equally, you might see a race where a horse has led all the way, and he's basically compromised his rivals by going faster than they want him to, and the race is, he's actually slowed down um, in the latter part of the race, but he's given himself an advantage before then that the others couldn't overcome. So he's he kind of dominated the race. Um, it's it's very instructive to know that kind of thing when when you're looking at a race um you know let's look at this race tomorrow as an example uh, or today when you're watching this which is a race with a uh, a gg syndicate horse in it el hafi and the pace in this race looks to be even now it could be even to slow um, if we look at this race on Wednesday, which also has a Gigi's horse in it, if I can find it now, uh, this one, the pace here is predicted to be maybe falsely run. And you can see that there are no obvious leaders, um, not even any prominent races. Now this Oud Meta Bridge might go on, but <clears throat> in a race like this, I would be I would be wanting to know which horses have shown they can quicken off a slow pace and I would be using data in the race card um, to support that and if you put it on uh, if you put it on the, the horse form and then click the show sectionals box you can see um, horses where it's been slow and then fast and you can see how they've performed so Pactolus here it's done okay in that context um, and not many there's not much data here for others unfortunately um, so, 
Pactinus is the only one that really tells us that he might be able to operate in this in this way. Um, that isn't to say that others can't. It's just that we we can't see that they can or can't. We haven't got the data. Obviously, when there are blank lines, this is because we haven't got sectional data for those races. Um, I didn't really want to get too much into individual races, so I'm and I'm very conscious of the time. So I'm going to wrap up now. Um, uh, before I close, I want to say that understanding sectional data is not something that happens overnight. It's something that you need to uh, embrace and take time with over time. It's not for everyone. It doesn't need to be. You know, it's like even even the most ardent sectionalista would have been finding winners happily enough before they discovered sectionals. So, um, can it improve your race reading? Yes. Do you need it? No, particularly not if you're on Gigi's actually, where a lot of stuff is based around form profiling via Instant Expert and um, just uh, general pace uh, and draw content and, and that kind of data driven approach. So or st statistical and profile driven approach. Um, sectionals does add something to that. Uh, but it won't be for everybody and if it's not for you then fine you know like I say the default is is off um, and if you want to look at this stuff you need to turn it on um, over time I hope that you'll you will uh, get curious let's say and get more involved in it but um, if you don't that's fine and if you do that's great if you've got any questions leave them under the video uh, in the comments and I'll do what I can to offer a vaguely sensible answer all right this is Matt Bisogno saying thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.